Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. I'm going to try something different for this video. I'm going to try and keep it short. I'll outline the basic construction process for this subwoofer project, and then I'll create a second video where I can dig a little deeper and explain the nuts and bolts of this project. You know, the fun stuff. So if you just want to see this thing go together quickly, you're in the right place. This is the Epic Small Cube Subwoofer. The driver used in this project is the Dayton Audio Epic E150HE-44 5.5 inch subwoofer. Now, I bought two of these for another project, but just for fun I started modeling these in both vented and passive radiator enclosures, leaning towards the smallest size practical. And what I ended up with was this, a 10 inch cube constructed of half inch material. In my opinion, this is about the smallest cabinet that I think will work for getting basically the most out of this driver. Well, let's dive in. I chose to make my own half inch stock by gluing together four pieces of 1 8 inch high density fiberboard and making my own very rigid panels. I often use this technique when creating curved panels, but I thought I'd try it to create a flat panel for a change. But 1 half inch MDF would work just fine. It took a total of 24 pieces of 1 8th inch HDF to create enough material for all six sides of this cube. This was one massive glue up. If I were to do it again, I'd break this up into two smaller glue ups. This was a bit much. Not to mention, I was kind of swimming in glue by the end of it. I chose to use 45 degree miter cuts to build this cabinet instead of butt joints. It makes a stronger glue joint with no chance for any seams to telegraph through the veneer later on. I chose to recess the Epic driver, but it has a thick flange. With only one half inch thick wood to work with on the cabinet, I needed to add a bit of material to the rear of that panel to ensure a secure fit. I made this 3 8 inch thick board out of the same HDF as the cabinet and cut it into a 7 inch circle on the bandsaw. Then I glued it up to the front baffle board. This will allow the driver to be recessed the correct one quarter inch and still have enough meat behind the four screws to bite securely into. Now for the main glue up. Painter's tape was used as a clamp to hold all the boards in place. I chose Gorilla Glue to secure everything together. I sprayed a little mist of water on the seams before applying the glue as it was pretty dry in the basement and this stuff needs some moisture to work right. I used quite a bit of the tape to make sure that the expanding pressure of the glue as it foamed out didn't push the seams apart. I glued up five sides of the box first and then added to the sixth side when that was done. To make life a little easier. Now we wait. I let this sit overnight before taking the tape off and cleaning up the foam out of the glue from the seams. After a quick sanding I was ready to apply the veneer to the cabinet. I wanted to do that before cutting the driver openings. I applied glue to the enclosure and then I placed the veneer on it. About this veneer it's a man-made or a reconstituted veneer. Since it's fleece backed and very thin, I just ended up using regular type onto wood glue and clamps to hold it into place. I'll get more into all of this in the digging deeper video, but basically I didn't use the iron on method that I normally do. Next I put a piece of wax paper on top of the veneer just in case any of the glue tried to seep through any cracks. Then I placed a piece of 1 8 inch HDF followed by a piece of 1 quarter inch cork, then a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF to clamp against. I did the sides first, then the front and back, then the top. I didn't bother to veneer the bottom since it won't be seen. I did get to the trouble of matching the front and top veneers carefully, which you can see in this rotating veneer money shot. I decided to only recess the active driver and not the two passive radiators as the flanges on them are only about an eighth of an inch thick and they're really designed to be surface mounted. So in this case I'll veneer first, then I'll make the driver openings. 
Clamp it all together and in about a day I was trimming the two sides with my trim router. I cleaned up all the edges with my sanding block and noticed this white fluffy stuff all over the place. What is it? Again, check out the Digging Deeper video for more info on that. Next up is the veneer for the front and back. Same procedure. I marked which was the front so that I could line up the grain with that top piece. Three, two, one, and flip. Here I'm being careful to get the top of the front piece of veneer pretty close to the edge of the box so that the top veneer piece closely matches it. I hold up the top veneer piece to make sure it's right where I want it. I even put a few pieces of tape right on the veneer to make sure it didn't move from that exact position. Then again, wax paper, 1 8 inch hardboard, 1 quarter inch cork, and 3 quarter inch MDF. Then clamp it. After trimming and sanding the front and back panels, I'm ready to glue on the last top piece of veneer. This is the most critical as I want the grain lines to match almost exactly. Once I've got it right where the majority of the grain lines are matched up, I put a few pieces of the blue painter's tape to hold it. Then I use the same procedures as the other sides. Then I trimmed up the top piece of veneer. A little sanding and beautiful. I attached my circle router jig to dead center on the front and set the cut width a hair larger than the width of the driver frame, which in this case is about six inches. Then I made my two recess passes moving towards the center. I'm using a one quarter inch spiral upcut bit at a depth of about a quarter inch. Here's what it looks like with the two recess passes made. I moved the bit towards the center another quarter inch and made several more passes going deeper each time. This is for the actual driver cutout. Then I just drilled an entry hole and cut the last little bit of material with my jigsaw. Hey, you know, let's just pop that driver in there real quick just to make sure I didn't screw this whole thing up. Ah, perfect. I had no doubt. As I said previously, I decided to surface mount the two passive radiators. I drill out an entry hole and cut out a few openings. Easy work for my jigsaw. Here I'm marking center punching and drilling the screw holes for the passive radiators and for the driver. Both use number six black oxide screws. The feet for the subwoofer are just pieces of two inch ABS tubing cut to an inch and a quarter in length. I used the 60 millimeter Falstner bit to cut the recess for the tubing to sit in. I went in a touch deeper than an eighth of an inch. As you can see, the plastic tubing didn't quite fit in the opening, so I had to sand the recess just a touch to get it to fit. As you can see, I did something different with the feet to give them a little pizzazz. And I'll tell you all about how I did that in the Digging Deeper video. All I need to do before applying the finish is to make some breathing room for the woofer. and give the box a final white sanding. I won't bore you with too much footage of the finishing process, but it basically went like this. I applied two or three coats of Minwax Rub-On Polyurethane, followed up by a couple of coats of the General Finishes Rub-On Poly, followed up by one last coat of the Minwax Polyurethane. Since I didn't veneer the bottom of the cabinet, and I have to do something with it, I'm just throwing a bit of this flat black paint on. It's latex and it dries in a half hour or so, so I can keep moving with things. Some of you folks who've been paying attention may have noticed that I hadn't yet created a way to get the signal to the driver. I didn't forget, I just couldn't decide whether to put the terminal cup on the back or on the bottom. 
After seeing the cabinet with the finish applied, I decided I didn't want to spoil the beautiful green on the rear, so I decided to install a small terminal cup on the bottom so the wires would just come out from underneath the enclosure. Now I need to install the feet, so I mixed up a little 5 minute epoxy, spread it in the recesses, and then tap them in. I used a little piece of wood to apply equal pressure, and also to prevent dinging the feet with the hammer. Yeah, I think he likes it. Now I need to add the appropriate amount of weight to the two Dayton 8-inch passive radiators before installing them in the cabinet. You know, the back frame doesn't quite look stock, does it? I'll get more into what happened there in the Digging Deeper video, but, um... Yeah, I've never seen a cabinet bounce around like that before either, but long story short, I did not end up needing to modify the frames after all. Time to install the driver. And the two passive radiators. Alright little guy, it's time to show us what you got. You know, it's really hard to convey across a YouTube video just how loud and good this thing sounds, even while running full range. As you may have experienced, most small subs just sort of peter out at a certain volume, and turning up the knob more doesn't seem to make it go any louder. But this little epic monster just doesn't seem to want to quit. If you're considering building a small subwoofer that can play loud and low in a small cabinet, then I think you should at least consider this subwoofer. If you want to see more about this project and get answers to some of the questions that likely popped into your head as you were watching, stay tuned for the Digging Deeper video coming well, as soon as I can finish it. That should scratch all those itches. I'll try and keep that one short as well. I also left a link in the description below to the Parts Express Tech Talk forum thread where you can find all the information you need to build this project. Well, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. What?